Okay, today we are um, demonstrating how to give puppies breathing treatments. Um, the, the nebulizer that we use is a Voyager nebulizer. You can order it from Revival Animal. Um, it's also, you can use it, you can also get it at medical supply stores. They have other ones too, you don't have to use a Voyager. It's the same thing that you would use with a child that has asthma or a, even an adult that has asthma. Um, the uh, medicine that we use in it is the albuterol sulfate. It comes in a 25 pack box um, and just little tubes. Use one little tube per treatment. Um, also, you can use genomycin. Genomycin is an animal um, medication. Albuterol is a human medication. We just feel that the albuterol works the best. The albuterol helps to open up the airways and it um, makes the hair follicles breathe, which helps to move congestion out. We've had, we've seen several bulldogs. Um, it saves several bulldogs' lives and newborn puppies' lives, and it's just very, very good for bulldogs to have on hand because, you know, in this case, we're demonstrating if a bulldog puppy has a cold or congestion, how to use this to um, move the congestion out. But also, if a bulldog you know, gets overheated, gets heat stroke, or gets stung by a bee, or throughout its life gets a cold where it gets congested. You know, this is just as important, we feel, as antibiotic, because if a bulldog has congestion for too long, they can actually get scar damage. You know, so the faster it's moved out, the better. The tubing that comes along with the nebulizer um, is just right here. It's a mouthpiece and tubing. It comes in a little package. Um, basically just, it's called a replacement net pack. They're only like $4, so usually if I place, place an order, I'll order, you know, five or six of them just to have on hand. The tubing does need replaced, um, you know, every month or two, depending on how often you're using it, because obviously if moisture builds up in there, you can get a little bit of bacteria in it, um, or even mold if, it last, if it's too long. So, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how to use this. Um, obviously, you just connect the tubing to the mouthpiece um, and then to the nebulizer. You've got to connect it, you know, really, really tight. Try to put it all the way up at the top because every once in a while, with the pressure of the air coming, flowing through really strong, it could, um, you know, pop the tube off of the mouthpiece. So, and we also, then we connect the other end into the nebulizer. Nebulizer is very, very simple. There's just an on and off switch. And um, this one actually I've had pop off on me more often than the other one. You want to get it really tight all the way down as far as it'll go. Okay. And um, then to put the medicine inside of the mouthpiece, what we just unscrew the top. Um, actually, first of all, the mouth. Let's go to the mouthpiece first. The mouthpiece goes two directions, but we always block one direction because we want it to go straight to the puppy's face. The puppy to get as much as possible. So we'll take like, you know, a little tissue paper or paper towel or something to block one side, um, and that way we can have the other side open, the other side open to go straight in the puppy's mouth. So. so we're going to take the, the albuterol and put it inside the capsule for the mouthpiece. And we use one whole, you know, packet for treatment. Just twist right off. You can just see it fill up. And just twist the cap on real tight. And then after you do that, make sure you keep it upright while you get the puppy ready because you don't want anything to spill out. So we just kind of set it in here to keep it upright while we get the puppy ready. Now to actually give the treatment to the puppy, there's a couple different ways to do it and we'll show you how we prefer to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the puppy right now. Okay, so we're back on. 
Now we've got the mouthpiece ready. We're gonna go ahead and show you how you put it on his, you give him it this way. You can sit in a rocking chair or whatever, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with a little blanket. Um, the, the breathing treatment normally lasts about between 10 and 20 minutes, you know. However, we prefer to give it to him in a nip crate. Um, and the reason is because it's a tent. You know? So let me show you how we would do that. If you've seen this already, how we do it this way. Okay. Now with the nep crate, basically it's making a tent. So we will put him in the crate and um, we usually use a strip tie and I'll show you exactly how we do that to hold the mouthpiece up to the crate while he's in there. Now the reason we do that is for a couple different reasons. Um, obviously, Normally, if a puppy has good a good amount of congestion, you know, we're going to nip him, um, you know, maybe three or four times a day, more between two and four times a day. So obviously, time it's time efficient because you can put him on it, go do something back else, and come back in 15 minutes and check on him. But the most important thing is that in the tent crate, um, the neb is stays right around the puppy, so the puppy is getting as much as possible. And when the nebulizer treatment runs out. You can turn the nebulizer off and um, the, the mist in the albuterol treatment will stay in and around the puppy for about, um, you know, another 10 minutes or so. They can just kind of sit and, and breathe it in. So let me go ahead and show you how we'll do this. We'll go ahead and put him in the crate. We use a small crate, um, you know, just enough room for them to lay down and move around. That way that the medicine will be you know, on the puppy, around the puppy as much as possible. Put a little bit in there. Try to make sure they go potty before you put them in and don't put them in right after they've eaten because obviously you don't want them to go potty, you know, during this treatment. So, and to do this, we'll use like strip ties normally. Um, there's different ways that we can do it depending on the crate you have. Like see this one doesn't have very big holes in, in the front. A lot of times crates will have a hole big enough to actually put the mouthpiece through. This one doesn't. So we can do it that way or we can do it on the side of this one. The side of this one has like little holes. Go ahead and it's like we could just, um, I would probably put it in the middle one. Up in the middle one probably. You know, or you could put it there and then use the strip tie like at this hole. And then, you know, we strip tie through the bottom here. And pull it tight. Well, we're not gonna do we're not gonna actually do it. We're just gonna show you how how what an idea it is. Right there, you know, so that it can hold it. And then what we would do is go ahead and put the tent, which could be any kind of sheet, you know, where the puppy could still breathe. And then we turn the nebulizer on. So the mist is going in there. Let's open the front to show you. Open the front of the crate so we can show you how the mist is going in. See, it's going right into him. You can actually see it going in. And then when it gets the whole thing filled, we'll just be breathing up with medicine. So. Um, okay. Or we can do it through the front. We can turn this off and we can strip tie it through the front. And we're just showing you this to give you ideas of different ways that you should do it if your crate's a little bit difficult, you know, not to give up. So let's go ahead and show you how we would strip tie it through the front. Okay, so now we're demonstrating another way to, you know, connect this from the front. Like I said, this is kind of a difficult crate. We just want to show you to be creative, you know, to keep trying if you have a crate that's difficult. So this one we're going to go ahead and zip tie from the top. Not always that easy. We probably should could have bent this zip tie before we did it. <laughs> I 
He's having fun in there. That's going to hold that there. Then we're going to put one in the bottom to keep it straight. I'd probably bend that zip tie before we put it in there, make it a little easier. He says, these are tasty. nebulizer on. Shut the tank right. All right, and then we can just leave it here, but you know, between 10 and 20 minutes, you'll hear the medicine. Instead of hearing that mist sound, the medicine runs, it'll start to have a dry sound. It's very important not to leave the nebulizer on um, over 20 minutes because it can burn up the motor if it's left on too long. Um, they weren't they weren't made to long run for an extended period of time. So once it runs out of medicine, you turn it off, and um, we'll turn it off, and then we'll just let the puppy sit in it for about 10 minutes. Because by that time, the crate is full of the, the albuterol, or if you're using gemmycin medicine, that way the puppy can keep breathing it in. Um, and then once the puppy is done with his breathing treatment, which, you know, and he's already sat in it for about 10 or 15 minutes afterwards, we'll take the puppy out, put the puppy back, you know, let him play, and then take the mouthpiece and dump the medicine out of the mouthpiece and clean the mouthpiece out, and then, you know, put the breathing treatment up for the next use. Um, this is really easy. It doesn't take very long because you... Once you get the hang of it, it really only takes about five minutes to put the puppy in the crate and start the nebulizer. And you can go, you know, do errands, watch TV or whatever, and just set your clock and come back and check them and take it out, take him out or let him sit in it for longer. But really, really, really is good for a bulldog has congestion or, um, you know, just because they have small airways. It's something that I would always recommend having on hand and being educated on doing trying to remember if I'm leaving anything out. Can you think of anything I'm leaving out? No? Yeah, and then sometimes if the puppy has a lot of congestion, you can pat on their chest after they come out like the sides and help them work it out. But And sometimes after they have a breathing treatment, they will cough a little bit more or might sound a little bit more raspy. And this is good. You know, don't think that, you know, it's it's causing them to get worse. It's actually making them better. It's loosening everything up and opening up the airway. So instead of the congestion sitting inside, you know, it's flowing and it's getting it moving out. So they might sound a little bit con more congested, but we have seen this save newborn puppies' lives. We've seen it save um, several dogs' lives. What happens is if a bulldog gets a simple cold like kennel cough, um, and actually in the past I've had breeder friends of mine and show friends of mine that have had dogs that have gotten kennel cough and um, basically what happens is when they get the kennel cough and the fluid or congestion moves down into their lungs or their airways their um, actual trachea and their bronchial airways tighten up and because their airways are also already so small, a lot of times the congestion will get stuck down in their lungs and they will, either it'll take them forever to work it out or sometimes they just can't, they never will. And it'll cause um, scar damage to build up in their lungs and for them to have long-term issues. So the breathing treatment is so fantastic because it opens up the airways and helps it to move out, move out. So it's not a situation where they have the cold so long that they start getting that scar damage. It keeps the issue.